Hi, my name is Jim Moyle and welcome to episode 5 of my Pesta and PowerShell series. Today we're going to be talking about test drive and test registry. Both of these Pesta elements are there as effectively scratch areas. Quite a lot of the time when you've got a function, you've got a module, you'll be writing to the file system or to the registry and when you're testing you write to the registry or to the file system and then you have to clean it up afterwards and you can get all kinds of artifacts left over and it becomes a bit of a mess. Test drive and test registry are here to help you out with that. There are temporary areas that will get cleaned up at the end of your PESTA test. Okay, so let's have a quick look at what's going on here. So as soon as you open a describe block, what will happen in your temp directory is that you will get a new folder created with a GUID as the folder name. Let's have a look inside that and that is empty. If we <coughs> have a look at this test drive variable, which is automatically created as soon as the describe block opens, we can see that that contains the full path to that folder. We can also <coughs> excuse me, access that folder by using the test drive here. So test drive colon backslash, as we can see there. So now what happens if we try and create a file there? We can see it on the right hand side, describe scope.txt. Now because we're using Pesta, of course, we're going to use Pesta to check that that file is there. And oh look, excellent stuff. It is there. Now test drive does have the concept of scopes. It isn't quite PowerShell scopes, but it is still the concept of scopes. So if now we're in a, a context scope, let's create another new item, context1.txt, and we can see that on the right hand side in the file system. And then let's check for those two files, of course, using PESTA. So test path should be true for both the describe scope and the context one text file. Now that was true, but we can see that context one dot txt file has disappeared, and that's because we exited the context scope. Anything that was created in that context scope is recorded and then is deleted afterwards. Okay, so Pester is maintaining a list of what files were created when. We have a new scope. Let's write a new file to that test drive. We can see that again on the right hand side. We're going to see if that describes scope file is there. Absolutely. And the context and the context too. Great. All right. So we've passed all three of those tests. Now, remember that this describe scope file was created in the parent describe scope. What happens if we rename that file? All right, we can see that on the right hand side. Great, and of course, we're going to test that. And that passes. What's going to happen when we exit this context block? Remember I said that PESTA was maintaining a list of what was created when. It also maintains a list of what was modified when. And if this file is modified within the context block, even though it was created in the describe block, when we exit that context, and we can see on the right hand side that that file has gone. Finally, we're just going to have a couple of PESTA tests to check that those two files aren't there. And great, it looks like they've gone. That looks perfect. Now let's have a look at test registry. Now test registry acts almost exactly the same as test drive. And we'll have a quick look at test registry. Now, if you remember, test drive created a test drive variable. This is pretty much the only difference in that test registry does not do that. It doesn't have a variable with the actual path to that registry. 
it does have a drive which we can use and if we create an item there we'll have to pop over here and refresh and we can see that there's the GUID that was created when we opened the describe block and there is the new key that we created just above. Let's use PESA to test that's there. And it is. Great. Now then, same thing. Let's see if we can create an item within the context. Let's refresh it on the right hand side and we can see that. Obviously we're using PESA to test that both those keys exist and happily they do. Now, what's going to happen when I exit this context block? Let's just refresh on here on the right hand side. Oop, we need to uh, go past there. Okay, so now let's say on the right hand side, we've exited the uh, context scope and we've entered a new one. Again, let's create a new key. Check that that has arrived on the right hand side. It has. And we'll check again using PESTA that everything looks great. It does. Okay, so we've checked that the two keys that should be there are there and the one that shouldn't be there isn't there. Same as with test drive. Let's try and see in this context when we rename the parent item. So now we see we've renamed that item. What happens? Will it be the same as test drive? Will it remove that item? Yes, it will. So test registry and test drive both have concepts of scopes. Both are maintained in a list by PESTA. And if you touch it during the context block, it will remove it once that context block has finished. All right, so we'll just finish this off with a couple of PESTA tests to check that they've gone. That is a typo and should be false, but that's fine. Let's have a look inside PESTA and we'll see that that GUID key has gone because we've now exited the describe scope. I will change this typo uh, before, um, as soon as this episode is finished recording and uh, it will be fine in the code that you see on GitHub. Well, if you have enjoyed this episode, please hit like. And if you want to see more, please hit subscribe. Thank you very much.